Okay. A lot of people were upset with how I opened boxes, so I'm gonna use this box cutter now. Carefully, carefully, cut away from yourself. I got time for that. What do we got? Ew. We got ourselves yet another Ambernick product. Boy, they gotta slow down with these things. They're gonna run out of ideas. Gently, 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 gently. <laughs> we have the RG35XX. Wonder what color I got. Oh, I think it's the Game Boy one. Boy, I hope it's the Game Boy one. Ooh, yeah, it is the Game Boy one. That's pretty cool. All right, what else? We got the Game Boy, the DMG style one. I got a screen protector. Standard stuff, ah, ah, cables, a manual, my wipes. Let's clean it off, let's get the screen protector on before I break it. I really like that DMG look. I'm really excited, this is the color I want. That's pretty slick. I don't know, you picked this up? You picked this up on camera there, Gary? It's raised a little bit. There's like a bevel to the screen. And that tracks, I think some of the other guys that got these, some of the other reviewers, couldn't get the screen protector to go on right because the glass itself of the screen was beveled but yeah, he'll give it a shot boy they're, they're getting smaller every time look at that that's all they sent no more no dust on there in the meantime keep an eye on that there's dust how'd that get there oh jeez. okay scrub 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 uh, back do this quickly carefully what the, does this even fit? Ew. Ew. I don't like that one bit. I don't, ew. Get out of here, Bubbles. Ah, it doesn't matter. I think this thing might be coming off. I just, I don't like, I don't like that at all. I don't like that. Can you see that, Gary? Can you, it's like, it's not flush, It's it floats. See how it kind of floats? It's just not flush, it doesn't. I don't like it. No, sir. That is a step back. Is it just because of the inherent design of the, the screen? Son of a biscuit. Now I understand what everyone was complaining about with this screen protect. That has nothing to do but to, I guess, just get rid of it. Oh, well. Dee, 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 dee. Me and Gary just got yelled at by my wife to be quiet. Apparently, I got too animated about the... Screen protector. Well, it's gone. I took it off. It's right here. Added to the pile of ones I screwed up, but I think it's not my fault. See, like, there's that little, like, bubble? It's... It's not flush. Oh, uh, let's see. We got, uh, HDMI out on top. SD card 1. No SD card 2. I gotta dig out an SD card. Power reset. Headphone jack on the bottom. I love that. Power on the bottom. You have your speaker right here. It's obviously designed after the DMG, the original one. The weird goof, you know, everything. It's just, whew. that's slick. It's slick looking. Now what I'm worried about, if, it, if it's gonna perform. So let's turn it on. Yep, oh, there it goes. Okay. Oh! Okay, first step, turn that off. Uh, button sound, close, ah, theme, hmm, hmm, yeah, we'll go eight, it's pretty bare bones, I'll tell you what, let's change the background, ooh, that's pretty, um, got my history, oh, history, someone played file error, one of my favorite games of all time is File Era, and then someone played Castlevania Game Rooms. <sighs> uh, wide variety of stuff. That's, that's a Neo Geo Pocket. I know a fella that just got one of those. Let's see what come on the handheld, and then I'm going to take a little break for station identification. I'm going to charge this guy up a little bit, and I'm going to uh, get an extra SD card, and I'll add some new stuff there so we can play some of the games. I, I asked some of the fellas on the internet, I said, what do you want to... 
see me play. And they told me. Uh, so I, I got to get those from my vast personal collection, rip them, and then put them onto an SD card. So we'll, we'll get right back to it. You're listening to Zoo's Reviews on WKZU Montana. And we're back. It's a very nice screen. Is it the, well, you know what? Let's get some comparisons out here. Here we go next to the 353V. Is it the same screen? Boy, that's real close. That's real close. And it's it's the same same width. A little shorter, you see? And no sticks. Next to the Miu Mini. It's much bigger than the Mini. Now the Mini, eh, eh, I gotta bear down on it. I don't like playing it for too long. People say they can play role-playing games with one hand. That's cool. I mean, that, that, that does have a purpose. Especially if you have a young kid in the house and you're holding a baby with one arm and you're playing Final Fantasy. Next to its granddaddy over here, the brick. You definitely see where they got the uh, the idea. Button colors, little speaker, one random curve. Pow kitty. Amber Nick, if you're listening, I know you are listening because you put the headphone jack on the bottom because I keep saying that on the top it's bad. But if you are listening, uh, maybe the guts of this in a clamshell, no sticks, no analog sticks, maybe a slider down here if you need it. I'm just saying. So let's get into the gameplay. So I added some games. Let's see how that works. Uh, well, there's my wipeout. So I had Wipeout. People ask for Wipeout. See, you, I have no problem loading ROMs. I, that that might just be an isolated kind of issue with uh, with Russ. I don't know. Well, let's try Wipeout. Oh, it crashed. Not off to a good start. Well, let's try some other PlayStation games. Uh, Metal Gear Solid. Someone wanted to see Metal Gear Solid. Oh, hey! Hey! This is Snake. Colonel, can you hear me? Loud and clear. What's the situation, Snake? Uh-oh. Ah, crap. What do, what do I do? What button hits? Button, what button fights? There it is. Well, it works. Snake! I don't know. The ergonomics. The 353V is, spoiler alert, it's kind of my, my sneaky overall number one handheld of the year. I just, I just like the form factor of it. You know, I can... It, it, it fits my hands really well. And this is essentially the same without the analog sticks. So this really just... Let's get past the cinematic. Uh, this really just... It feels good. And the plastic... It has a, has a texture to it, a little bit of a grit. It's not going to slide out of your hands. The buttons are all extremely responsive. Classic Ambernick D-pad. These buttons... They just feel nice. Select Start... That's your menu, uh, your normal stuff on the side. You have your dual rear shoulder buttons. Some people are concerned. Oh, they they rattle. Yeah, if you're you know having a violent attack of some sort while you're playing it, that might be a problem. But you know, normally you're gonna be holding it like this, and eh, it doesn't seem like a big deal. <sighs> Unskippable cutscenes. So one of the things this really needs is um, custom firmware. Let's just Let's go elephant in the room. You know what I mean? We're just going to talk about it now while Final Fantasy loads. I know, Gary. I have plenty of time. It's an RPG. So, the custom firmware that this stuff ships with is not good. It's not good at all. Black Seraf said he found a way to unlock RetroArch. I think that'd be the way to go. Something like that. It needs... Not, not, not the front end, the menu. Ugh. It's, it's kind of garbage. But it's not the end of the world, right? I've seen worse. Um... Where it really fails is in-game, right? Like, I want to be able to press select and one of the trigger buttons and just fast forward through all that jazz, but I can't. Um, 
and I think if we can get a, a kind of a bare bone retro arc on here and use that as the the main interface at least for now um, we'd be better off but that being said this interface is also super easy for people who are new to the hobby and I really think that's what they're going for all right well it sure is dark yeah yeah I got I keep trying to add more lights but sorry Zidane or whatever your name is hello the speaker is pretty good that was right his name is Zidane I saw, I mean I'm pleasantly surprised with uh, PlayStation we'll see how this battle goes specs wise it should be able to play it but a lot of the early reviews and the early impressions were uh, worried it seems slightly sluggish in the battle and again this is definitely where you'd want that fast forward but hopefully they'll get there you know you do have to review based off what you're given and in the uh, the UI the operating system it's definitely half-baked you know to me this seems a hair slow um, but it's playable let's see what it looks like with the scan lines on so you have uh, one, two, three, and four. Fast, I think, just takes it off. Scan lines, CRT, HD is, you know, heavy smoothing, and Dot Matrix makes it look like a Game Boy game, which would probably be cool for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, that kind of thing. Let's try scan line. That actually helps a little bit with the PlayStation game, I think. Yeah, battles run maybe five... I can't tell. There's no there's no hotkey for the FPS, but it seems like it's running five, maybe I don't know if it's a full ten, maybe five five to ten FPS lower than you'd think it would. Cause it just it just immediately feels a little bit smoother in this part. Alright, let's get out of here. I never played Einhander before. I had an N sixty four and then a GameCube and then a PlayStation two. I, I skipped PlayStation one for the most part. I know the classics. I've been introduced to a lot of them. Uh through game of the month is this like a mech rpg no is it a, a smup shmup kind of squaresoft made a shmup how have i not heard of this that plays pretty good oh i died this feels silky smooth man i love grandia I never heard of this game until uh, RPG of the Quarter. We played it in the beginning of the year, and it was a good game. Yeah, right now I want to be able to hold down a hotkey and fast forward, right? But I can't. You you said they wanted me to test Fire Emblem, right? This is actually a pretty good test. Someone on the Discord mentioned that uh, this would be a really good test of text scaling, because obviously you have no control over aspect ratio or any of that. Um, because the UI doesn't allow it. Um, this is a game that has a lot of text. I know that when I played it on this V90, it was a very aggravating experience because it was scaled just wrong and the text was hard to read. Uh-oh, the bandit spotted me. Well, it's probably because you wear those dresses. The slit in your dress goes all the way up to your waistline. Good lord, have some modesty, Lynn, from the plains. Whoop, you missed. Wow. You know what? I know in my head that that's not stretched pixel perfect, right? It's not It's not the way exactly it should be, but it's good. That's a pretty good test for Game Boy Advance. I'm impressed. I didn't think that the text in these games would be good just because of the scaling. All right, shut up. Let's, let's, let's go a different game. Uh, what did they really want me to play, Gary? Doom? You know what? I'm an idiot because it has a wait, select core. Oh! <gasps> Is that only for GBA? Yes, GBA has two cores. Game Boy Advance on here has two cores. I don't know why, but it has that. That's pretty cool. All right, let's look for Doom. Stupid barrel. Ugh, I'm already kind of sick to my stomach, but seems like it's playing okay. Yeah, something has gone terribly wrong with this game. All right, hard pass. I apologize to anyone in the audience that just had a seizure. Good lord. Let's try Super Mario RPG. Alright, let's see what combat does. Okay. Can't tell without an FPS counter. It feels a little slightly sluggish. Now, text in this is 
kind of hard to read, but I feel like the original Star Ocean text wasn't great, especially this translation. Dorn, I hope you get a uh, turn of stone for your, your rude mouth. Oh, man. Well, I haven't played this game uh, for real. Last time I was at Hills, which is a, a department store, and they had one of those displays set up. And me and the other, well, I died. Me and the other latchkey kids, your, your mom would take you to the store. Shut up, Zangrief. Your mom would take you to the store, and you'd, uh, I don't want to watch, I don't want to watch you buy blouses and school shirts. I'll go hang out in the video game section. They got a Street Fighter 2 SNES set up, and, uh, um, you'd, you'd play, play this, and there'd be like six or seven kids there. Ah, there'd be six or seven kids there, and you'd have to play round robin tournaments so you keep playing. Oh, this is probably when we're going to see that weird uh, scaling issue that's been in a couple of the other videos. Oh yeah, that's super weird. That's super weird. I don't know if you can see it. It kind of goes away if I tilt the handheld away from me. Are we? Are, can we get that? Shut up. Alright, it's kind of weird. Does it pick it up when you tilt it away? See? It's like they're all there again. That's weird. Let's see what effect the... Uh, Dot matrix, see what that does. Nope. Uh, see, HD? Nope. Scan line? Nope. Oh well. Ah! Well, it plays okay. I'm really bad at it. Oh, I wasn't supposed to go down there? <laughs> you dummy. Yeah. Well, Gary, what did we learn? The RG35XX, or as I like to call it, 35X, uh, is a relatively cheap uh, 50 to $60 range handheld that can play all the way up to PlayStation 1, plays a lot of PlayStation 1. It has a very nice form factor. It has a beautiful screen. Um, has very nice buttons. It has a headphone jack on the bottom, which is nice. HDMI out, which seems unnecessary for a handheld of this power, but whatever. And uh, it's got two SD cards. It doesn't have analog sticks. It has a very, especially this DMG coloring, it's very reminiscent of the old school Game Boy. It is bigger than the MiU Mini. A lot of people try to say that it's a direct competitor, and in some ways, Maybe it is. Uh, maybe Anbernick's trying to cash in on the market. These are really hard to find, unless you're in France. But I, I, I think it's just kind of a, a lower-powered version of this boy, the, the, the 353V, which I love. It has the potential to be the perfect buy it, set it up a little bit, give it to your cousin Joshy, who's kind of into retro handhelds. He's not really in He has emulators on his, his computer but he hasn't really taken the plunge. This this would be the gift to get for him. You'd put, put all your favorite uh, legally obtained ROMs on the second SD card. It doesn't come with a second SD card, but you can, you can put one in there. There's, there's, there's not a scraper on the machine itself. You can put pictures in and they, they show up as long as it has the same name as the, the ROM. Um, but anyway, uh, this is the kind of handheld you could do some, some very minimal setup, give it to a relative uh, newcomer to the scene, and they'd have tons of fun. They wouldn't realize that they're missing out on uh, so much more. There's no Wi-Fi, uh, so you can't do your retro achievements. There was some confusion, I believe, that at some point they said it had 2.4 wireless controller, but I think I think we've narrowed down that that's, that means a dongle. You plug a dongle in, which that's not ideal. There's no ways around it. The UI is not good. I can't sugarcoat it. You're missing a lot of quality of life features that have come to be standard in, in the majority of these handhelds. There's no fast forward, there's no retro arc to speak of. You you load up an individual emulator through the minimalistic front end, uh, which is not very customizable at all, and uh, away you go. I did find that Game Boy Advance, for whatever reason, has two emulators on here, and uh, surprisingly enough, Game Boy Advance, even though the screen isn't really well suited for it, the the game scale well, and I enjoyed that. Played a lot of SNES today. Played a lot of PlayStation. I didn't get into to Game Boy or Game Boy Color. I'll probably do that 
later although Stubbs did almost a full hour with this Damien did some some stuff I know Aish is working on it so it, it it will have been covered I really just wanted to reach out today and see what people wanted me to play and I think I played a fair amount of that and outside of Wipeout for whatever reason oh and and Top Gear 3000 uh it played everything pretty well as it is I'll give it a three out of five but I think there's potential uh, today Black Seraph said he was able to get uh, retro arc on there not a not a hundred percent solution but it's a good start as is a little bit of setup you can give it to someone as a present and they will have a hell of a time as long as they don't know what they're missing out on now if you're gonna buy it as a regular viewer of our channel uh, I would recommend eh, getting this guy the 353v and otherwise the build quality on this thing it's out of sight we're definitely gonna come back and review this as more custom firmware comes out I think we're really just scratching the surface with this guy, but again, it is unfortunate that it's shipped kind of, kind of half baked. Uh, but stay tuned; we will definitely uh, watch this this handheld's career with great interest. <laughs> you get it, Gary? This is a Star Wars meme. You know the prequels. You like the sequels? Ugh. Anyway, uh, remember to mash that that like button ring that bell subscribe for more of zoo's reviews and all the whole retro handheld team remember be kind to your handhelds and be love love each other be good to yourselves touch handhelds shake hands get eight hours of milk drink your school and get uh plenty of sleep all right well i'll see you later friends it's just your old buddy zoo and gary for zoo reviews the 35xx so long